Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have a little change in program. Professor Wormse Hacke is unfortunately not able to come because she is ill, but uh, she is more than substituted by Professor Tochtermann. I just introduced him um, at the beginning. Professor Tochtermann, he will talk about on the evolution of semantic technologies in scientific libraries. And uh, his CV says that he his doctorate in computer science, University of Dortmund here in Germany. Then as a postdoc, he was at the A&M University of Texas in the Center for the Studies of Digital Libraries. How could he know at that time? <laughs> and uh, he got his second doctorate, uh, his habilitation, as we say in Germany, in applied information processing and communication at the Graz Austria University of Technology, and since 2010, he's now director of the German National Library of Economy in Kiel and Hamburg, and also professor of, of, for media informatics at the University of Kiel. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I will be talking about what we did in uh, semantic technologies for our own library, the uh, ZBW, the Leibniz Information Center for Economics. In uh, ZBW, we collect um, the scientific literature in economics only. That is our main focus, collecting uh, scientific literature in economics and making it available to the uh, um, uh, community. So a very focused uh, community in our case that is primarily um, uh, researchers. We don't have much customers or users from the industry side. The reason is that um, only very, very few companies do research in economics. This is very different to a pharmacy, to, to medicine. Uh, um, in, for economics, there is no huge market um, on the industry side. Um, why is or why are semantic technologies important not only for our own library but also for any library? Here you see like the result of a query in our um, OPAC, and that query is about the cross domestic product in Asia. Um, if we highlight just the first three hits of that result, we see the following three. Now imagine you enter a similar query on GDP in Asia, which is syntactically different, but semantically it just means the same. In that case, in our OPAC, you would receive different results. And the reason is because, uh, like in the old days, our OPAC could only understand the syntax, but not the meaning behind the search query. And uh, cross-domestic product in Asia and GDP is really semantically the same, but the system delivers different results. And we wanted to overcome that um, uh, issue, that um, uh, problem. And we uh, investigated a lot of research in the area of semantic technologies. And I have highlighted three um, different approaches we have taken. There are more underway. For example, we are also dealing with the semantic technologies to uh, um, address um, scientific research data management, for example, to support a, um, a reproducibility of, of um, research or data-based research. But this one I skip here. I just um, focus on um, semantic document repositories. Then I will introduce how we can you know, open up the silos, the data silos of ZBW, so that we can also connect our content with the content from other providers. And finally, I address the issue on how we can um, cementify what we call the deep um, web, or how can we make our systems available to search engines such as Google, even though the content is in the deep web. These are the three um, uh, topics I will be addressing during the course of my presentation. Now, the first idea started um, uh, in 2010, and actually I took over this idea from my former position at Graz University of Technology, where we already started that type of work. And the key idea of this uh, PhD thesis was to represent publications as a semantic graph. That is, we wanted to analyze and kind of harvest the publications, the content, and extract as much information as possible 
and model that information in a semantic graph. And all what we do then with the retrieval and searching is based upon the semantic graph and not on the document or an index which is based upon the documents anymore. A semantic graph for a document would then look like this. Um, we would use um, uh, existing uh, vocabularies like Dublin Core to, uh, um, uh, to uh, refer to the publication date or Dublin Core title to relate to the title of the publication. We could also use other vocabularies like friend of a friend um, uh, to show um, uh, to who the author might be related. And that is just an like, excerpt of a really big graph for one document. And then all the retrieval is um, based upon this semantic description of the document. The advantages are obvious. Um, uh, we could in that, um, uh, in these graphs, we could um, uh, model that GDP is semantically the same as gross domestic um, uh, product. Why can we do that? Because uh, ZBW is maintaining a thesaurus in uh, economics, and that thesaurus is also represented in SCOS and also in the linked open data cloud. So, and that thesaurus you know, contains information about uh, similarities, homonyms, synonyms, and, and everything. And here's just an extract that expresses GDP is semantically the same as a gross domestic product. And then uh, I, um, I search for you know, a GDP in Asia or cross domestic product in Asia. You know, there we could identify that the first part is um, semantically the same. Such an approach also helps us to um, identify other relevant results. For example, we can model um, that Asia um, is a country with has, which includes 48 other countries, like for example, Malaysia, the PhD student came from Malaysia, and Iran are um, in, you know, located in Asia. And that would enable us to also retrieve uh, documents which are not indexed by the term Asia, but indexed by terms which are somehow related to Asia, like, for example, Malaysia, which is you know, part of Asia. Um, just a sketch of how we wanted to, to implement that. Um, again, to, to remember, we wanted to take the publication itself, the PDF or whatever format we have, at the first step, we needed to do a natural language processing, so we needed to you know, analyze the content of the document. In a second um, uh, phase, we wanted to enrich it with uh, semantic information, particularly um, the information which comes from the uh, thesaurus we have. We did a named entity recognition, that is what NER stands for. And this entity, um, named entity recognition, um, is based upon the concepts we have modeled in our thesaurus. It might be enriched with other concepts from other, um, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, um, uh, knowledge repositories, knowledge repositories which are based in the linked open data cloud. Once we have done the uh, like um, lexical analysis, the semantic analysis, um, we could identify the concepts and. What's more important and more complicated is to also automatically identify relationships between, contact, between uh, concepts. And all that comes into a big database. And in the end, this database would look like this. And each, um, you know, each rectangle represents one document, and the documents are connected with one another based upon the uh, um, relationships we have extracted. This, so far, was the idea. Um, and now some uh, um, uh, limitations. The uh, creation and the updating of the database, of the knowledge base, you know, the, um, uh, with the uh, um, uh, semantic graphs for each document, that is indeed a very complex task. We need to do the lexical an analysis, semantic processing, uh, relationship extraction, and all that. Another more legal issue concerned the uh, um, limited rights we had to do text and data mining. 
uh, even if we have a digital copy of a document and the right to disseminate the document, it does not include the right to do text and data mining on the documents. And even uh, for open access document, that is not necessarily true that you can do a text and data mining. You also need to define your own license to which the authors have to agree to. And finally, um, we did not use that technology in our own setting because we had to rely on third-party technologies, um, um, the technologies which were coming from the research institute in which uh, LIM was employed at that time. Um, but it was never sure whether that institute could guarantee the sustainability of the service. What we cannot do is integrate in our products um, our results from research institutes of which we do not know whether they will be existing in five years' time. And finally, that is also I want to mention, not every student stays in academia. So this student, during the course of his PhD thesis, simply left academia and moved to industry. Um, I, I've put that on my slide because there is much hope in Germany uh, to, you know, that the uh, scientific libraries will become more and more innovative just because they have now scientists involved, like as uh, said, Bemet is also uh, hiring uh, two professors. We already have uh, three in our institute, but just having these there does not necessarily mean that all the research results will really contribute to the benefit of the services. And that is really another organizational challenge uh, we have to address once the researchers are there. Still, that um, uh, project um, uh, had some good ideas. Um, uh, the semantic representation of an entire document appeared to be too complex. So we decided to uh, um, uh, only focus on a few parts of the document which we can uh, uh, model semantically and use these parts to what we call cross-link sciences. The idea here is that um, uh, you start a search query in ZBW's environment, say in our database, our virtual library on economics, and you get offered additional content from other virtual libraries, like for example from agriculture or from uh, uh, social sciences, just by cross-linking the two silos we have. And we are using a linked open data cloud to do that. And I will show you um, the key ideas of that concept. That is another PhD thesis which is currently um, going on. And again, we have the um, uh, like a semantic representation, not of the entire document, but of parts of the document. We have such representations in other um, repositories as well. And then the idea is if we have two concepts of which we know that they are similar to each other or even the same, we can offer the document on the right hand side as a additional result of a query in ZBW's repository. Just by knowing that two concepts are the same or similar to each other. This requires uh, to have uh, at least some information uh, being published in the linked open data cloud. And uh, as mentioned earlier, ZPW is uh, maintaining a thesaurus, STW, that is the standard thesaurus for economics. We have uh, represented this thesaurus in SCOS, that is a modeling system for knowledge objects, and published this representation in the linked open data cloud. And in the linked open data cloud, our thesaurus is uh, aligned with many other, uh, such like um, uh, um, uh, thesauri or um, concept bases. Like, for example, um, is this a lazy? Yeah. This here is our STW. And all the green ones, these, they, are, um, they are connected with our thesaurus. For example, with the uh, Thesaurus from Agriculture, which is maintained by the FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization from the UN, we have um, 1,100 roughly linked concepts between Agrobok and SDW. So we, we link concepts of the one Thesaurus with concepts from the other Thesaurus and use SCOS to express what is the relationship. Is it exact match? Is it part of? And, and stuff like that. 
want to show you an example how um, that works. In that case, I take our open access repository, which is uh, Acon Store, and here you just start a normal query, in this case on biofuel. Um, you get a list of hits, and we open this document here, the long-run impact of biofuels on food prices. And now on the left-hand side, we, we open the information, the metadata we are maintaining about that particular uh, document. You see the title, you have an abstract, you have publication year, authors, and things like that. On the right-hand side, in the upper part, oh, in the upper part, um, you see the concepts with which the concepts from the um, standard thesaurus um, economics with which the document has been indexed. Like, for example, the document is indexed by clean energy, food demand, land quality, renewable fuel standards, and things like that. So these concepts describe the documents. And these concepts are part of the SCOS representation of our thesaurus in the linked open data cloud. And in addition to this, we know that these concepts are somehow related to concepts from Acrobog. Um, in particular, these um, 50, uh, 35 concepts from SCW are aligned with 23 other concepts from Acrobog, in the sense like is similar to, is exact match, uh, relationships like this. And this allows us to start a query with these concepts in the Acrobog system. As a result, we get additional literature offers from uh, um, the Acrovoc, um, uh, say, database that is Open Acris, that is the, uh, their um, uh, virtual library. And now what we did now is we enriched the results for that one particular uh, document we have uh, found in uh, Econ Store, uh, the document on uh, long on uh, um, impact of biofuel on food prices. For that document, we, we can offer additional uh, documents from a different um, scientific area, um, in that case, agriculture. The key question now is, how do we select the documents? Um, uh, how many should we offer? And this brings me um, to the following point. Um, what is the quality of the resources we should return? That is indeed, the, and we have three uh, identified three key questions um, on which we are working on. The first one is, is which of the concepts should be considered? I showed you we have 35 concepts um, from our own Thesaurus describing the document, and these 35 align to 23 of Acrobog, but which one to take from Acrobog? The second key question is um, how do we express that a doc document from Acrovoc is similar to a document from our own repository, from Econ Store in that case? What is semantic relatedness or relativeness? So when can we say that a document from Acrovoc is really semantically related to a document from our own repository? And uh, thirdly, um, we, we are not sure about that. Does it make sense to do a further inferencing to identify even more concepts? So if concept A and concept B are related to one another, B and C are related to one another, we can infer that also A and C are related to one another. We don't know um, whether to uh, integrate that. What we know is that linked open data applications are extremely slow. Extremely slow. So. Um, we cannot offer this uh, to our users at the moment. Uh, these uh, linked open data Sparkle endpoints, for some reason, are extremely slow. We, you have to wait for too much time. You will lose your customers um, um, during that time. And secondly, many of these services are not really reliable. So do we know that these services uh, still exist like in one year's time? Uh, is the content of these services um, uh, up to date? Uh, this is all um, uh, not solved at the moment, and this uh, is related to the missing governance structure of linked open data applications. But still, um, from a scientific perspective, that is worth um, uh, 
working on it because, for example, Acrovoc, that would be a source in the linked open data cloud we, um, we, we, we would trust because it's maintained and run by FAO from the UN. So far, I have um, addressed um, semantic technologies from the perspective on of the documents. And now I would like to uh, address it from uh, um, more a search engine perspective and also the perspective of the query interfaces of the systems we have. And this relates to semantification of deep web access. Well, we all know the World Wide Web and the web is like an iceberg, that is often said. Um, uh, it, is, has a, it consists of mostly static HTML documents. But this is only a part of the web, and these static documents can easily be indexed by search engines such as Google, Yahoo, Bing, and all the others. But much of the information is in the deep web. Um, that is uh, said to be the largest part of the web um, and cannot easily be indexed by search engines because in the case of Zbimet's application, Metpilot, of TIB's application, um, get in for our own uh, virtual library econbiz. All the data is stored in, uh, in databases which cannot easily be accessed by um, crawlers such as Google, for example. The key question is now how can we make available the deep content um, stored in, uh, in econbiz and the other virtual libraries for such uh, crawler tools? This is uh, yeah, another PhD thesis which is currently going on. Um, uh, and that uh, thesis deals with the uh, well, semantics in uh, virtual library systems. What we already integrated is the following. Here is the um, uh, query interface um, of EconBIS together with a set of results. If, imagine a user is um, entering a query uh, like this one here is just on management. Then uh, the system returns results. On the fly, while the results are returned to the user, we semantify the, the content and um, uh, add semantic information as RDFA in that page. And that helps um, in the ranking of uh, these results, um, in the Google ranking of these results. But so this is um, not the focus of, of what I will be talking about. I will talk about more how can we semantify the query interface itself, not the results. And um, uh, this has to do with the logic of the deep web um, uh, content and how it is accessed. The deep web content is normally accessed through a query interface. And the users just formulate a query and retrieve results from the background database. Pretty much like this. You enter a query like uh, management and then the result is returned. And here in the lower part, you have all the results matching the uh, term management. And how do search engines operate? They cannot directly access the deep content. In our case, in EconBiz, um, the deep content consists of 9.2 million data sets. What the crawlers do is they, on, on, on the EconBiz homepage, they search for tech clouds, they search for sitemaps, and through these tech clouds and sitemaps, they try to access the documents here. But of course, not all the 9.2 million uh, um, uh, data sets we have are represented in a sitemap or in the tech clouds. That is just part of the entire database. And what we also identified, we have per day one to two million page impressions by Google crawlers for that system. So that is really a lot, one to two million page impressions, impressions by Google crawlers who try to, to access the deep content. Just for your information, on the user side, we have per month at roughly 250,000 unique visitors in EconBiz. And um, uh, many of them um, come through Google. But of course, it could even be more if Google could crawl the content. Now, our key idea here is um, not to focus so much on the technical retrieval side, which is displayed here on the left-hand side, that we did before, so we have an API, so that that is a standardized interface, so that um, any other software tools can access uh, the data. We, we investigated how to 
best optimize the index um, of our database. But we wanted to now um, focus more on the users and on, on the user behavior and offer you know, what the users do to the search engines. Like, for example, if users uh, search uh, for an article in Wikipedia, often they start their search query with Google and then hoping that among the first like 10 results, there is a Wiki Wikipedia contribution. So we want here to do similar uh, things. Um, you know, the students, researchers in economics are using Google to search for um, scientific literature and economics. That is, we want to provide Google additional information how we offer that content to our users. And by that, we follow the idea which goes through all the scientific activities we are doing uh, at ZBW that is bringing the content to the user. We don't expect anymore that the users come to our pages, like to EconBiz or to Econ Store. Instead, we try to open many channels through which we push the content to where the users are. And this here is one channel. Other channels are related to social media optimization. Many of you might know schema.org, that is a semantic uh, vocabulary, and since uh, 2014, schema.org offers a, like search actions, and that helps. And we use these search actions to semantically um, describe the query interface. What I will be showing now is not, it does not uh, match with the um, um, search action vocabulary that is from the days before. But in general, um, we semantically uh, describe the query interface um, by the following three items. First, content. We, we semantically describe what content can be accessed through that query interface. Secondly, um, how do you have to access the content that actually describes just this field here, where you enter the query terms. And thirdly, associated elements in case you have more or you allow more complex queries, not just the one line um, Google like query, but the advanced searches relates to the associated elements. And as to the content properties, we semantically describe for that query interface that the content of this deep web database is on economics. We semantically describe what type is available there, and there, is, there are two types, creative work, these are the articles, but we also have a big database on events. So these are the two different um, content types we offer. Um, we can say a little bit about the language, it's multilingual, it, we have like Spanish, German, English, everything, and um, how huge the database is. In our case, it's 9.2 million data sets. That is the description of the content properties. As to the field properties, we semantically de describe so that search engines can understand what you can enter in this query interface. And here we just describe this single line. So the domain is a string. You enter a, a string. And through that, uh, uh, this string is then uh, uh, mapped onto creative work and events. That is the range of that field. Creative work, again, are the publications, and events are, are the events we have. In our case, we can also uh, add information about the type of the vocabulary users or search engines might use. For example, our uh, thesaurus. We can say we have a thesaurus and refer to the um, SCOS representation in the Linked Open Data Cloud so that the search engines can also use vocabularies from that search engines. And of course, we can, have, um, can provide information about field operators, like you can search for a title, for a person, for a language, or for a specific subject. This is the uh, um, overview of the uh, query interface annotation vocabulary, because what I showed you is just part of the complex query interface. And once we have that, we, uh, um, uh, you know, search engines understand our query interface because it has been described semantically with a standard like schema.org. Now, Google can, you know, analyze the semantics of that query interface and can start their, query, their queries through their um, uh, crawlers and robots. 
Secondly, for us a benefit is we, we, we get even higher visibility and more usage because now the crawlers can also access our um, database. And of course, um, uh, we, in the end, we can satisfy uh, the user needs because users often start querying with Google, Yahoo, Bing, and these tools, all these tools which have uh, defined the uh, schema.org standard. Uh, why are they satisfied? Because they get more information from the deep web um, uh, of the Ecombis database. So let me come to an end. I uh, started with uh, the idea to um, uh, represent documents as semantic graph. And the collection of these semantic graphs form a huge knowledge base. And then we do all the retrieval and searching just on this knowledge base. It turned out that this is a rather complex approach because we need to generate this um, uh, knowledge base. We have to uh, maintain it and everything. In a second uh, phase, we um, wanted to follow up the idea to use more semantics um, uh, in the documents and restricted ourselves to the index, to, to the index terms uh, which come from the uh, standard thesaurus for economics we are maintaining. Through that, we can ex or offer and enrich results which are related to Econbis with the documents from a completely different disciplines, like for example agriculture. And in the third phase, I introduced um, how we uh, open up the uh, um, uh, deep web content of Econbis so that crawlers can also access that part of um, uh, the deep web. This is what I wanted to show you. I tried to keep it uh, kind of simple, didn't go uh, too much into the technologies. In any case, thank you very much for your attention.